I'm going to bust the top 10 money myths right now. My name is Manif Ali and I became a self-made multimillionaire in my early 20s and I've built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars of sales. I started to make these to share my life experiences to teach others how to become successful and how to become more financially aware and financially responsible. The number one thing that I always hear is debt is bad, debt is dangerous, debt is evil. I know there's a lot of gurus out there that have said all debt is bad. But no, not all debt is bad. For example, let's say you have a business idea and you, you're going to wait to start this business and it takes you 20 years to save the kind of money needed when you could have gone out and gotten a loan to start your business. Let's say you wanted to get into real estate. All real estate investors somehow leverage real estate. They don't wait until they have amassed enough uh, money to go ahead and buy a house or an investment. They use a loan to do it. And then credit cards, they're not bad or evil. In the beginning of your life, you're actually utilizing credit card debt to build a credit rating. And in this country, it matters what your credit is when you're trying to do a business or get a home loan or get a car. So establishing your credit is really important. And no, not all debt is bad. I'll tell you from personal experience, I was only 18, 19 years old when I started to invest in real estate. I had a friend that was investing in real estate who was a little bit older than me. He leveraged, I got some return. And then later on around 21 years old, I started to buy real estate. Guess what? I didn't have two coins to rub on. I didn't do any, you know, savvy, you know, seller financing or any one of these. I just bought a house and I was able to leverage. I used some credit cards. I was able to put on a down payment, but you could see I leveraged a whole amount and I got really successful in real estate. Matter of fact, these days I have companies that sell billions of dollars in real estate. And most of my advice these days, I have companies that sell billions of dollars of real estate. And my advice is completely free and it comes from the wisdom that I've gotten over 25 years in business. Number two is this theory that one size fits everyone. Now there's a bunch of financial experts, like I was saying, they'll tell you, you know, put your money here or buy this stock or, you know, go ahead and put this amount or percentage away and buy this, do that, buy this program. Be careful where you get your advice because it's not always that one size fits all. There's a lot of ways to create wealth and keep wealth. Be knowledgeable about where you put your money. Don't just blindly follow somebody because they've got a couple million followers. Ask questions, you know, rest assured that if you feel like it's too good to be true, most likely it ends up being not true. Number three, buying gold or silver or any other kind of precious metals. For one, gold and silver are very volatile and they could cause you to lose a lot of money. Cash is always king and being liquid always helps. And in different financial crises, gold and silver has fluctuated quite a lot. And so if you're heavily invested in that one thing, you could lose your backside. Back in 2001, if you bought gold, great. But just a few years later in 2010, if you sold it, you would get a huge profit. Conversely though, in 2012, if you bought it and you sold in 2016, you could end up losing everything. So you could see the fluctuations. So just know that maybe it's okay to buy a little bit, but you don't want to put your entire portfolio in one thing. That brings me to my next thing, which leads me to the number four thing, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Everybody wants it. There's this whole fear of missing out, but it is entirely volatile. And you know, you see it when something goes up sharply, it can also what? come down pretty sharply, right? These are old adages, right? These are old sayings. So understanding cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, yes, have people become wealthy? Absolutely, right? They have, but unless you really know what you're doing and you put the time and energy into understanding all facets of it, you could end up losing a lot. It fluctuates, right? The value goes up and down really quickly. 
So knowing that you don't want to put all your eggs in that one basket, just remember, like I said, I made the analogy of ice cream. You have your vanilla, you have your stocks and bonds, and you sprinkle a little bit of gold dust, you sprinkle a little bit of crypto on there, that's fine. But don't put all of your money into that one thing that could be very volatile for you. The other myth is that everyone can invest. All you need is this course or this expert or that person advice or watch a couple of videos and then you could go out there and do the same thing. Like gambling or I like to call it day trading. Can you amass a lot of wealth? Have people done it? Yeah. But then some guy is out there telling you buy this course. Well, if the course is so great, why don't you just amass millions? Because day trading also fluctuates a lot. And I don't know if someone has made a whole lot of money. Maybe someone can send me a little hate mail, but all the day traders I know are in and out of business pretty quickly. And then they go back to getting a job or they're really, really good at it. And they're not out there making content or courses. Number six is that rich people are evil. I've learned a lot. Now, along the way, you know, I had an illiterate mother. I was raised in the projects. And if it wasn't for some wealthier people that I came in contact with, I would have never understood my mindset about money because my mindset about money was that I probably would never amass the kind of money needed to live outside of my neighborhood. But it was one person that kind of changed my view. I worked for him um, at a form folding company. I think they're out of business now, right? Along came computer programs. But I was there folding forms for this gentleman and he drived a nice Porsche and he was a, a businessman, but he was there every single day. And I learned a lot from him in business. Even though I was there about a year, I worked three jobs in high school and I was able to see a lot of successful people, whether it was my manager at the movie theater I worked in, or it was my manager at the clothing store I worked in. I learned a lot and some of them were wealthy and some of them have issues with money. But I could tell you for sure, not all rich people are evil and not all poor people are great as well. So you have to understand that wealth gives you abundance to be able to do a lot of things. So get that mindset out. You can learn a lot from people who have accumulated wealth. And is all wealth created or transferred fairly? No, but life is such, right? But get that out of your mind. Not all people are evil in one group or another. Number seven is that saving small amounts of money is not going to amount to anything. Now, only in this country have I been able to walk the streets. I walk, uh, you know, every morning or I'll, I'll, you know, walk in the evening and I routinely find nickels and dimes and quarters and pennies and someone's toss them. It happens too often for me to think, okay, it's just falling out of people's pockets. But I see them all the time and even found dollar bills and, you know, much more out there. The respect for small amounts of money, ah, just keep it, keep the, you know, keep, keep the change or I don't need it. Or think about the view of small little steps. It's a habit forming thing that you should have on saving as much money as possible. And those small amounts add up. There have been people who are blue collar workers that have amassed millions over their lifetime. So respect the small amounts as well. And you can start saving small amounts of money. You don't need to start to save huge amounts of money. Mark your calendars because every Monday we're going to have the Monif Ali podcast. The topics will be anything related to finance and personal development to help you live life of success. You're also going to have exclusive access to Monif's interviews with other successful people who can give you tips and wisdom on becoming a millionaire. Number eight is avoid risk at all costs. Oh my God, I, I want to um, always have enough money and I never want to take a risk. Now, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of successful people out there that have taken the risk. There's a risk, there's a reward. I'm not saying go out there and put all your life savings into one venture, okay? But it depends on your risk tolerance and your age level and what you're willing to gamble to get and grow. So not all risk is bad either and not all risk is good, but the people that make the biggest risks sometimes get the biggest rewards. So when you're thinking about 
finances, it's okay to be risky a little bit as long as you don't end up losing everything. Number nine is that budgets are miserable. They're not. If you want to live within your standards, you just need to cut down on things. You don't have to cut down on everything you like. You don't have to forego that coffee like everybody's been saying. You can still have the coffee if you make other cuts in other places in your life. Simple thing is, you know, I buy a whole gallon of milk and half of it goes bad, then maybe you should buy half a gallon of milk. Simple little things along the way. Budgets don't have to be miserable. It doesn't have to cause fights in relationships. You make little adjustments over time and you'll be surprised with how much money you end up with. The 10th biggest myth out there is the fact that people think they can think and grow rich. Now, that's great. You can think yourself into poverty too, but not just thinking about wealth. And I know there's the whole movement about your vibrations and calling in millions and I get it and I'm all for it. I believe in it as well. But thought alone is not going to get you rich. You have to put that into practice. For example, you have to work, you have to save, you have to you know, think about your wealth by analyzing your investments. You have to grow your wealth by visiting it all the time, by seeing what's growing, what's not, what percentage of your allocations is working and which percentage is not. Um, you have to be in theory, not just think and grow rich, but you have to practice and grow rich.